Storm, but it is still a stun. Slardar, Chronosphere, and even the Bolas can be fairly strong, the Searing Chains. So Prepare having Tilted Disable is a good strong point. And uh, actually every single hero in this game have Disable of some form. That's fun to see. Even I mean, Brewmaster would have to commit his ulti, but... It's a very stun-heavy lineups from both teams. Gonna see how the lanes work out here in just a minute. This universe is gonna be playing the Elder Titan, so they're not gonna be playing support Elder Titan, it's support Naga. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, this, this kind of makes recently. Yeah. This makes more sense because I don't think I've seen Universe play Brew much, if at all. That's true. That's true. They have played Naga support recently. I can't remember in which, uh, what tournament that was, but I did see that game as well. And I, MVP, they always change their rules around. It's going to be Heen off lane this game on the Faceless Void. And I think they actually just play the hero as opposed to playing the lane which I still think is probably the better way to do it, just because even if you're a good offlaner, if you have no experience on a hero, that's, I think, more detrimental than maybe not having experience on a particular lane. And yeah. MVP seem to always delay stuff, even when they're massively behind, just because of the experience that they have. They do. Mercy, please. Mercy, Mercy please. And QO this time, of course, playing the starter instead of the Ember Spirit, even though he was the Ember in the, the game begins. yesterday, where they got raxed 20 minutes in and kept playing till 65 minutes despite that. Um, so, QO, I'll leave it to 4 f this time on Ember. Amarj picking up an Illusion Rune here. Pretty annoying to deal with, but... And Witch Doctor's Harass is fairly annoying overall. Like, just the fact... Sure, he has zero armor, but very often he will either stun your face or start healing himself while clicking you. So, Fear might take some Harass here to secure the early lane of uh, QO. We gotta go for some heavy damage here. Ouchie. Look at that, man. Fear is getting punched. Yeah. They actually almost killed him. He's and at 48 HP and all he has are shared tangos. Yeah, shared tangos are not gonna do you much here. He does send out a salve immediately, knowing that he can't get to the, the bottle safely with this. He also went for a stout shield. Probably the stout shield saved his life, to be honest. Yeah. But this is gonna make it very hard. Oh, look at March. So smart. No, okay. Fear backs up and picks up the, the bottle, but March wanted to get the, the kill on the courier, I believe. That would have been... Could have been well, he still over. breaks the salve. I mean, yeah. he didn't get the full HP from it. He got most of it. It's like a hundred damage, hundred damage illusion attack. If you think about it that way. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Keen contesting the pull here in top lane. Hasn't actually distributed any skills just yet, and he has a boatload of regen. He does. I mean, this is actually the the smart way to build it because against Venge and Naga, they're going to be constantly harassing, but you're not going to die super quick. You're just going to be forced to eat some damage to make sure you get EXP. Yeah. Stardo has a scary weapon, man, just looking at him. He has 15 demons in prison. In prison. How does that even work, man? I don't know. How does, how does I've never captured prison? a demon myself. How, how do you get huh? on? So how, do you, how do you level that up? Uh, I'm not sure. You capture demons, man. Yeah. I think that yes. you must have to kill someone who is a demon or oh. have demons. Probably. Now uh, they're going to be secured here by March. They're going pretty hard here on Zion. PPD is sitting in the back with a stun ready. No RNG bash, sadly yeah. for them. Of course, level one. Yeah, he's so. saving it up. He's saving it up. Oh yeah. Better use that bash in the late game. Universe already rotating here because he's having a very hard time on offlane, and. You know, feeling that his job was done on bottom lane. Horizon right, so is here. Damage is being dealt with here. Oh, yeah, Stomp dead. coming in. Hits on all oh three. Oh my universe. god. What a player. QO is going to pop sprint. Eats a first thunderclap. Five. The next crush will go off. First blood going away of MVP, but Universe manages to secure the kill on QO. Well, he dies to the tower, but he does make sure that the hero goes down. PPD wanting to land a stun here. Not quite fast enough. And mm. Still and perfectly fine getting that kill. You could argue that it's not worth as much since Spear has been struggling and, you know, he's a little bit lower. And losing your Slardar when you're dominating this hard on mid lane already is sort of a bad thing. So I guess it's a fairly oh, even trade despite it being a first blood. Yeah, I mean, the golden experience difference was negligible at best, so... Yeah. And I mean, the, the cool thing is for Universe there is he was the recipient of the solo experience of a mid, kind of. Which is really cool yes. for him because his lane was going terribly up until this point. And he has his tranquils now, so he can happily just, you know, walk down to his bottom lane and try to give it another go. Do you think PPD stays here now and 
sits with Fave for a while. He might just, uh, you know, hold his hand a little bit and let him farm up. Just get the bottle, so I think Fear is going to be just fine. And more than anything, you want to get experience on the Brewmaster now. So Vench should probably leave again. A minute ago, he was 0-1, and now he's 11-2, and two, so it's helping a bit, I think. Yeah. Having that buddy system. Well, it's not necessarily that MVP can kill that well with their heroes on a brew. It's just that Fear wasn't full HP when they decided to like fully commit to the kill. Mm. And there were three heroes there, so. Oh, nice blue rune here by QO. Gonna pick that up and go and farm on the mid lane. Radiant's Dean middle trying to bait here on top attack. lane. Oh yeah, this could be a bit of trouble top. Yeah, they have smoked up here, so there's no way of knowing really that they're already sitting behind the secret shop or behind the side shop. His eyes slithering his way over there. Doesn't see anything. Seems safe. <laughs> like, okay, this seems legit. No one is here. But they're I mean, so patient, but no one is revealing themselves on bottom. Universe has to be calling this like they're not here. And uh, pretty safe play. Look at how tight EG are playing when they are unaware. Yeah. They're just sitting with all three on the safe lane together. Now splitting up a little bit, but still in fairly safe region. I think they're just prioritizing like the safety of their lanes because if the storm gets a good start, I mean, granted, Arteezy opts Dyer's to go for Bloodstone instead of going for the Orchid, but if he's able to snowball, the storm is one of those heroes that becomes just an absolute terror yeah. in pretty much any game. Now they're going to be walking forward here. He, he's going to be getting a Riptide into a pull. Nice time on the stun. He's not able to time walk away from that one. Ends up dropping and Snare goes off. Two Overload auto attacks coming out of Arteezy. He's going to throw a third. Oh, wow, Are they, they going to be able to get two? Looks like they will. Showing some strength there of this lane. Of course, two points into the Wave of Terror and two points into the Riptide. That's a lot of minus armor already. Minus seven armor and Storm just showing how hard he can hit through that. So, uh, strong play, no, no doubt. And that was MVP committing their supports going off lane, not pulling and getting experience, trying so long to fight the enemy, and in the end, just dying with two and backing off. Now they rotate over a ward. They cannot really catch a break in there. Oh, nice. Double damage march. He gets the coconut. No level six up here. This should be an easy kill here for EG. Teleport reaction coming in. It's going to be Zai. Here, goes in for the Riptide, doesn't waste the ensnare on the first kill. They actually managed to get two EG, having three. Oh, well, two of their supports, one offlaner here towards the lane. Snare. Just got mad. Oh no, the vision. He can't get it, but he's a little bit faster. He's trying oh, a bit ward. faster. That ward oh, plays over five. Man is angry. Yeah, that's high level searing chains, by the way. He's oh. actually opting to level up over his flame guard at the moment. The stomp and hits oh. on both. Universe with the clutch plays here. Fear. TPC then gives a little bit of a drink to PPD for his efforts, of course. The instant TP bottle giveaway. Still in your uh, charges. Oh, oh. QO. Going top lane. Soul ring. Balls away. Gonna try to juke here, but he does have the amplified damage. Looks like he'll have more than enough mana yeah. to get away from that. I was about to say he's not he doesn't have enough mana to get away, then I saw he has a soul ring and I'm like, okay, he's fine. So uh EG just five kills already, and most of them by counter initiations. So really well played, reacting in MVP's gangs. Honestly, with this kind of a laning phase, I would actually say that EG are about in the same position that they were in game number one, where I feel like their team has a really easy time like dictating the tempo until Heen becomes a threat, really, which is going to be a long time because you kind of want Treads, Mask of Madness, and another item. The thing is, if you just have Treads, Mask of Madness, and a safe lane void at like 9, 10 minutes in, yeah. that's actually pretty dangerous. But if you have it at like 15 or 16 minutes, or maybe even later, depending on how bad your lane goes off lane. Yes. Not nearly as scary. Yeah. But, I mean, the farm is going the way of MVP. Looking over to the hero stat, 50 CS against 45 for the safe laners, 36 for 26 on the mid laners, and 14 against attack. 3 on the off laners. So they're still ahead in terms of gold, just very barely. It's dead even, actually. And experience slightly ahead of MVP, despite the 2-5. So I think they're not that far behind but it's more about the fact that they're struggling when it comes to finding anything with their supports yeah Dyer's that is a big difference Zai's 2100 net worth comparative to the 900 and 1500 of the ogre and the witch doctors so yeah Zai is having a great time with this naga he's gonna get amped again and i think that's another thing too that's important to point out is one of their supports actually transitions into a semi-core if not a full core which is pretty terrifying, honestly, because if he ever gets a Radiance, which I'm pretty sure Zai has done himself, 
in a later stage of the game, just transition into pushing out all the lanes. Suddenly it becomes harder for MVP because their wave clear is going to be decent with Forev, but he's really the only one who has it. Yeah, but I'm not sold on the support Naga trying to transition into pushing out lanes and attack. carrying to any extent against an Ember. It's definitely difficult. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's, uh... It's gonna be tough still. Well, I guess we'll see. Sooner or later. Um... Oh, TZ jumping forward here. He's gonna find Heen. He does have Sphere, though. Just thinking about turning around and dropping it. Making it a little obvious, though, RTZ fully committing to this. He really wants this kill on March. Gets one more Overload auto attack off, but unfortunately, it's not quite enough. Yeah, and uh, we see a lot of rotations up here, but now gonna have to run back, I think, with QO, because else Fear is just having a great time on mid lane, meanwhile. And the ward scouted them out so early as well with the rotation stop. Oh, Q are missing a stomp here. Wanted to try to get some harassment and fear with the deny. It's an amazing skill though. It has eight second cooldown. So if you miss it, doesn't matter that much. It's also a two and a half second stun and two seconds slow after that. So on paper, Radiant I think Slithering Crush is one is of the best attack. disables in the game, to be honest. It's definitely up there. The biggest problem that Slardar has is, even though his base armor is really high, Sprint makes you just explode. Mm, that's yeah. I think that's really the problem that he suffers from because he kind of needs to use it in the early game, but when you do use it, you're putting yourself in a very precarious situation most of the time. Yeah. Especially when you're sprinting into like Elder Titan, Clap, and then you have Magic Missile to worry about as well, and a Storm. He's you just flop over. Things. He's also a semi-carry version of Centaur, but without the ulti. And Centaur without ulti Radiant's just doesn't sound too impressive. Is under yeah. And add semi-carry to that, and it's like, meh. It's, you know, sure, the Amplified damage can be amazing in some games, but it's not as impressive as the Stampede, which is really what makes Centaur such a great hero and buffs a lot to the, the War Stomp. Mid once again, MVP with the plentiful rotations here. Oh, he he's going to walk in. high ground right into Heen and Ryzen. Dying Spear going to be dropped, but killing is so slow. They need to kill him Radiant's faster, the split stop. Here comes the song. the song. The song of his people. Uh, and meanwhile, they're starting to go stop the storm spear. The split goes off as well. Got fire and kill. The courier was just chilling there. Oh, yeah. yeah that one like that. <laughs> now, that's a bit unfortunate. They're going to lose Ryzen here. Or is he going to kill on TPD in the meantime and top when they decided to TP out? So, oh, why just go back in here? Maybe you can get caught out if they have TPs, but they actually don't. So, Q is just going to give it a walk away. Or, I guess, slither. He's per perfectly fine. Oh, Heen walking into a lot here. Plenty of damage from the storm. Gonna be fine, I guess. Well, he's got a soaring still. Turns around, gets the bash. He's continuing to chase. He is not scared, man. 10 seconds left on a pull, and he's going to be able to walk away from this. Oh, oh he's mana used. not getting One close enough. Witch Doctor, no. March knows that every single bit of mana is used. Coconut into a death ward. He tries Dyer's for it, but the vision, the vision is gone. He's oh, he just had enough to get over the hill. My god. That is so depressing. Dyer's yeah, that is really sad fortified. to see for him. These oh, stumps, though. For March, of course. All right, so or four of he's got the uh, phase and probably has enough to retreat to. PPD and Zion not going to be able to make much happen in that regard. And here again, amp that middle lane, Ryzen throws the fire blast, ignite, follow it up, the clap comes. Or PPD coming just yet for oh, me. Get it versus nearby. Unfortunately, he did not have mana to stomp. Yeah, showing off how the amplified damage. Oh, he is soaring. Definitely yeah. helps quite a bit. Maybe he just thought he was dead anyway. Level 1 stomp is only one second or two seconds to disable, right? Two seconds? Also, it's he, a one. he can always uh, yeah, just sprint seconds. and run away, right? Two seconds disable. And 4 I'm trying to find anyone here. The song is still on long cooldown. Does miss the Searing Chains combination. But QO has a haste. Here. No need to use the sprint now. Yeah, there's no song either, so... Pretty dead Naga Siren. Dead Naga Lady. The gangs are working out a little bit now for QO. Uh, for for MVP in general here, PPD just casually staying. Middle tower Why not, under right? Attack. PPD is... Um, <laughs> and now he's like, okay, he's like, I'm not in the best spot attack. right now. Yeah. Just decide to do the, the TP out. Bottom tower no shame in that. Attack. I wonder how like how long it's going to take Dyer's our TZ to finish his Bloodstone. The last time we attack. saw him play Storm, he actually finished it like 15 minutes. Mm. Which is pretty darn fast. And then he just immediately starts fighting. And then I think he ended up buying an additional Soul Ring after the Bloodstone. Dyer's I think it might be... No, he actually fallen. went for the immediate work kit after Bloodstone. Oh yeah, that's I right. I expected he that he would though. Because yeah. going for an extra Soul Ring after Bloodstone makes a lot of sense. But I think he's going for the Orchid first, and he is. He does not go for the... 
plus on this game. Orchid is amazing against Ember. Yeah, but it's he also really played against a team that would, an early Orchid would have been equally good against, I would say, in this game. That's true. And he still opted to go for Bloodstone. So I wonder what like, what made him change his mind between the two games. I have know? to uh, pick his brain on that one after, yeah. after this game is over. Harass the pro players as much as possible on the land. Yes. They're, they're fine. Oh, come on. We, we treat them like kings here. They yeah. get all their food brought to them, basically. True. We should yeah. harass them. There's like a massage table in the back. Yeah. Jeez, we where? Open one. It's pro it's the wagon only. table. Ugh. Uh, steal the rune here from QO. Takes the bounty. Arteezy gonna be forced to spend all of his mana just running away from this one. This is exactly chasing, what though. you were talking about, QO Andy. is so fast. Yeah, he is extremely fast. Blink is available and he oh, gets him. Buddy. That's, that's a blow to your self-esteem as a Storm Spirit being chased down by, uh, by an angry fish. I mean, level one ball is not really that impressive, right? Oh, it's pretty slow. But also if he jumped another pack, he could have gotten away, but in the end, a sprint level three, now level four, Dyer's uh, starter chasing after you with Blink Dagger, it's Dyer's fairly hard to get away from. Fortified. So MVP are actually totally outmaneuvering EG right now. They just forced a Panda Split top of four of, and he was able to get away scotch-free. And in the meantime, they're just three people mid, attacking a tier one, they killed our easy who I think is probably like maybe priority number one right now yes. in terms of being able Dyer's to kill. It's a massive job. And it's an insane job. Could want to sing a song here and try to get something done. He's gonna try for the end snare, but of course, just blinking away. Bottom tower so amazing attack. start really this time for MVP. Fear finally does get up to his blink dagger. 15 minute blink from mid lane is definitely nothing you brag about, but he does have it at least. Well, I, we have to be fair, right? Like, he didn't have the easiest lane. They oh, were, definitely not. They were hugging him for a long time on yes. the side of MVP. No, blink forward. They're going on no, easy again. They're just going to throw a sphere over this. The multi to follow it. He just explodes. Dude, he got the nice stomp coming in from Universe. Are they going to be able to follow this up? The clap to the oh. team. Trying to teleport out. Get swapped by PPD. They'll end wow. up trading it. That's a two big one. Kills. Yeah, really massive. At least Q or four of it's split pushing. I would actually say QO as it's an Ember Spirit. Um, yeah, but it's four I, yes. I always do the same thing when people switch heroes. Yes, it's like you, you play one hero and it's yours. God damn it. Don't swap. <laughs> So at seven and nine here, EG maintain a small kill lead, but I mean, really, you gotta hand it to MVP. They've just been doing an excellent job of always Dyer's keeping the pressure up on the heroes that need attack. to be pressured. Like Arteezy's died twice in a row now. Oh, PPD actually getting caught out here completely. He was Bonk. actually not even sure what he was doing there. Yeah. He, did he have any wards? Uh, he did have a ward. Yeah. So yeah. He wanted to go in and drop one, but didn't find it in the end. There's the, the gimme rune right there. Do you think that there's a point to be made about killing Storm, trading two for one? Sure, it's not the best, but you shut down a Storm a little bit, who has a very important key timing. Yeah, I, I think it is actually pretty important, because this is a safe lane Storm, who doesn't attack. have an Orchid at 16 minutes in. Now, granted, he spent 600 or... He bought a bottle, and then he bought a Sol Ring. Yes. And he still only has one Oblivion staff, and he's, he's about halfway to his second one. So I would say this Orchid time is going to be like 19, 20 minutes. Yes. Which is pretty lackluster in comparison to what a safe lane storm you would expect out of, right? And that's the fastest given that he doesn't have to TP anywhere or help anyone right now. And also that he doesn't get picked off again. Radiant so structures it's are not fortified. too impressive. But MVP looking pretty happy right now. Starting to tank up a lot as well. Double Bracer on the Witch Doctor. And of course, Ogre is innately very strong. Ogre club over on Karnar. I guess boy, there's no surprises fallen. him going for a Mask of Madness, so maybe not tanking up on that hero. I think the Mask of Madness is going to be doubly effective on a team with a Slardar. Like, if you amp a hero and then you go inside with the uh, Mask of Madness on a Void, you just punch somebody to death. Like, yeah. you don't even need to bash at that point. You're just dealing so much damage. And QO being a level 11 now has a level 2 ulti, which is minus, what, 15 armor? Yeah, it's, it's completely insane. It's, uh, it's actually 15, yes. And late game, if you're EG, you gotta go up against Team RNG. You have the, the ding the ding from Ogre. Yeah. You have the bash from Slaughter. You have the bash from Void. And Ember, also pretty, from Ember. pretty well known RNG <laughs> yeah. hero later on in the game. So MVP are gonna have some pretty scary stuff. Radiance oh, look at QO. The, the nerves going in and trying to steal Ancients here, but this That's is pretty cool. Like, this is not something that yeah, EG that will have. I actually feel as though like the item progression 
is so much slower for EG right now on the heroes they need it to be quickly, or if they need it to be quicker on, like the, the Storm Orchid timing. I mean, Q is going to be pretty much BKB by the time the Orchid's finished, right? Or at least have the yes. Club and the Missile Hammer, so... Yes, there will be much, a very li limited timing window. How much are they going to get out of this? Do they, they buy it solely for the Ember? And, I mean, sure, it still works in the Ember and the Void, but I think QO is going to be a huge issue for Ahizi in this game. I think so. I think... Because all you do is you just pop BKB and just tunnel vision run at the storm. And what does RTZ do? Like, he pulls, and then he has to hope that his team disables a BKB target. Look at top lane. So aggressive. Yeah. But that's very true. That's very true. The fish Dyer's is going to be hard to deal with. Fish, meanwhile, bottom on Dyer's this tower also crushing it. Forcing out a, a glyph, at least. Taking a lot of damage, so maybe... Maybe with the stomp they can do something, but it misses. Dyer's yeah, he dodges it with the sprint. Has fallen. It's a cyclone there, but so he was still the last thing. That's regarding the slower item progression of EG, overall their last hits are not that bad. Like, overall. And the gold is only 700 advantage for MVP total. But Naga is soaking up a lot of farm. And how much do you value that farm? Oh, a little bit of a chase here, but I think he's going to be fine. Ooh, mm. that was close. I don't know actually if the auto attack would have killed him. Nah, but it he, he would have lived from, from one auto attack at least. But the farm on Naga just seems like it's hindering your course from shining a little bit. Because there would be more farm for everyone else if she did not have these 63 CS. It kind of depends on what farm you're taking, you know what I mean? Like, if you're taking the True. farm that is the easy farm and your storm didn't have an orchid, then I would say yes, it could be a little bit detrimental. But I maybe they're just thinking that Zai is going to be relied upon a little bit more during the late game because you can song during the Slardar, when it, or during the Slardar's BKB, right? You can song the Sphere. And being able to push out lanes is actually something they kind of need right now. I mean, look at the map. The lanes are Radiance pretty much all shoved towards EG attack. except for bottom. So, I mean... That's true. But it does hurt them at this stage of the game to soak up so much farm on Nagasaran instead, I believe. Uh, obviously, later on, it would be sweet to have a, a farmed up Naga as opposed to having just a support Naga. But I think he, she can do a lot, like TF 3 style, do a lot even from just a support role. Yeah. EG, EGM showed it so many times with the Heaven's Halberd build on a support Naga, how he can just walk in very tanky top lane. Now it should be an attempt here by MVP. Can they catch out the Storm? I think they can. Arteezy not going to be able to fall out of this one. Ryza going in, gets one multicast. The badges are real. He's not going to be able to get away. Just gets killed. Yeah. He is just dead to that. In, there's really nothing you can do when you get jumped by that because Storm doesn't fall away that fast. And the Chrono goes, uh, goes up really quickly. All the way. And the here on fuel. They might just kill him. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's dead. I think. There's the ensnare. And goodbye. So the blink, uh, blink clap was really key there as well. Oh, of course, the fish could just blink out himself. Lots of little trains going on here. Yeah. I think maybe... If he had just sprinted, like, directly Dyer's down after the crush instead of throwing out another ability, he might have been able to get out of range of the magic missile, but it could be close. Yeah, staying for the crush Radiant's or for the amplify after is crushing is definitely, you know, that's not that the time when you're trying to survive a gank, but I still think he was in a very bad spot Radiant's because of the end snare. Even the just use that if they really want to kill him. Or Abdir has to be a little bit careful. He's doing his best to do the man impression right now. <laughs> just playing as aggressive as possible. But I like it because most Ember Spirit players will play like this. Like they'll just play aggressively, take the dangerous farm, always have retreat remnants out to make sure that if anything goes wrong, you don't actually get punished for it. And Ember is one of the best heroes in the business of that kind of stuff. Definitely. And right now, getting okay, some nice and very, very important deep wards here into the enemy jungle. I think this this ward that they have in the Radiant jungle is going to be important for uh, EG. And of course, same thing over on, on MVP. Arteezy is just flying all over the place right now, just using all his mana to run away from all the cores of MVP. Yeah. So Zai is definitely going for the Radiance next after these drop and pull up builds. There's nothing else that he really wants. And yeah, I think he did buy a smoke there and drop in in base. But other than that, he's just playing like a carry right now. I mean, it's, it's 
dangerous to get complacent, I think, if you're MVP, because clearly they're controlling the pace of the game. Like, they're the ones always making EG react to them. They're pushing out the lanes as hard as they can, but there will come a point when Zai gets that Radiance, and when Arteezy gets another item, if it's going to be, like, BKB or if it's going to be Bloodstone. Either way, he's going to be tankier in the team fights. He'll be able to use his mana more liberally to be in a better position. And when BKB starts running out, it seems like I might be talking about that a bit early, as Kyo doesn't even have his BKB yet. But when you get the 5 second BKB, the storm becomes a lot stronger. Yeah. That is really true, but the BKB, multiple BKB bolt or MVP, I think they're going to keep them just safe here. The timing on Orchid was really late, and he thus decided to not go for any gank with it. He's gonna try top now, silencing four. Oh, this is gonna be an attempt that will succeed. Yeah. Orchid damage, killing yeah. him there. Briefcase, helping seal the deal. Or a stable, whichever you want. They're gonna find QO? What the heck is he doing over here? Speaking of minus armor, he had minus 15 armor on him there. Because of Elder Titan and just a wave of terror. If the Riptide was there faster as well, it would have been even more. Well, actually, the other way around. But that was, of minus that was sloppy from MVP, I think. Yeah, no, there's one more. Witch Doctor should definitely die here. You know? So that started out by not respecting the storm. You can't farm. And this is what MVP did yesterday as well. You can't farm right outside a tier 3 tower against a team that can punish you with hexes or silences. At least they're doing it now at 24 minutes instead of... <laughs> instead of 60, 62 yeah. minutes in, yes. Yeah. I mean, still, I would argue that the positioning right now on the side of MVP is, is not so great. Game getting get some honor here. Or is it being used? Is he going to backtrack anything? Universe even That's helping out so much. Spirit, yeah. I mean, it may not look like it deals that much damage to him, but every single punch from Arteezy there hurts so much. So, definitely EG finding everything they want and suddenly, definitely back in the game. I think this is one of those situations where hubris can be your downfall, you know, if you're MVP. Yeah. And I don't think it was necessarily that per se, but it was just like QO clearly like way out of position. Especially after he saw that 4F got ganked and just ends up giving away another kill in addition to that. And then March being on the enemy's high ground, like... I'm gonna go as far as to say that 4 was the one making the bigger mistake though. Standing right outside after having, you know, seen the Storm Spirit jump away, you yeah. knew he was farming the big camp with your ward. And oh actually never mind that now. If they're trying to get this here, I do Swag from PPD, gonna keep him alive. It's amplified up. Soul stack, We're doing though. some damage. They're gonna get a two-man stomp here. They're gonna go for Earth, the rise of the clap and the pull back in. They will be able to get one kill on the ogre. Mark's being chased down now. Here comes RTG with the orchid. A couple of auto attacks should be able to secure that pretty easily. Searing chain sits on two, but not much to follow it up. And the yeah. so greedy, missing that, like the crush with Slardar, blinking to the wrong way and then still committing to the chase. I, I don't think you get that kill, especially against a team with Nagasar and Ann Vengeful. Either there's going to be a song or a swap. So they just really wanted to get that kill, I guess. The call from Universe there was, I'm pretty sure there's a Void behind him. So really good awareness there. Why so Arkezy is dead. Yeah, the, the Bash Lords are chasers. And uh, seems forever is gonna go for a BKB build as well onto Ember. Does not want to get caught up by the Orchid anymore. So they're gonna have to try BKB build. Uh, maybe, yeah, okay, Void might just delay it a little bit as it's uh, very likely it goes for a Maelstrom instead. That Void head. Yeah. That's some cool the, Cthulhu stuff. He's got like a drawn on the face. the primal form of the spectacular Tank Lord. Oh, nice. In case you want it. Thank you. That was a ridiculous name. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually angry at that song. Name. Song actually being popped here. I what? think it's a runaway song. Yeah. Could be. Did he run so far away? Okay, he oh. wants to dive in here. This should be a kill, maybe? Here comes the Yules of the Universe. Blake Crush coming into Q. I want to stop him from coming out of stock. You're going to be so well. Yeah, well. Yeah, he can be popped by Q. He turns around, wants to try to kill Zai. That's going to be a death before the range is finished. Definitely hurting him. Looks like Forev is spending some time in the air here. The rest of EG nearby. Kyo thinking about trying to counter initiate with a stun, but he's not going to be able to get in position for it. Ryzen, EG is stunned. Which I could be in the air. So, he has a stun ready. Got to go for a stun on PPD. Starting up, goes on the end of the storm. And I think that maybe if you're overcommitting here. Yeah. Chasing PPD down. This is so much greed for getting one support kill, and then you get punished really hard by EG. I think every time fights like that happen, 
The only thing that, that could have went better for Ichi is if somebody else besides Zai died because he didn't have his radiance yet. You know what I mean? It sounds like a 30 minute radiance is not all that impressive, but we have to remember this started off as a four position Naga. Yeah. So that being said, pretty darn good. Ichi is going to be able to open up the Roshan opportunity. They do have a blast, so 28 minute bloodstone. Yeah. yeah. Gets the bloodstone after the Orchid, so in the end, going for the same item build. I think the Orchid made sense against the Ember. Yes, the Orchid was not to get aggressive ganks going himself. It was just to rely on MVP making mistakes, and he did punish them. Yeah. So he, he definitely needed Orchid. Especially given that we saw MVP, like you said yesterday, being willing to put the Ember so far up like that in danger. You can yeah. catch him out with it. Well, it's kind of those heroes' job, right? Yeah. Like, if you're not going to find solo kills, you have to be worth your weight, more or less. And you get prioritized in a lane, so then you start farming the position that no one else can farm but you to give the rest of your team a chance to stay relevant in their item progression. So I think it's, uh, it is risky, obviously. And what does Slark need to have to play big TP? Armor? You mean Slark? A uh, Slark. A lot of people go AC for the armor aura. I would say that's a really good choice. Sometimes Slark is going to build Vlad's just against heroes like ET. And I don't think anybody else on the team is going to buy a flank crush. Coming out from QO, he does have a BKB. Stomp and they're just gonna, Yeah. I wouldn't be sad to see him go fire with Vlad's for, uh, for armlet. The guy keeps chasing here, trying to catch anything, but again, very directly outside the enemy base. What a dodge! He dodges the stun. Very <laughs> nice. Yeah, Zyber, still dead though. Still gonna go down. Oh, he he gets a spear on two. Universe and PPD caught inside. Our PPD and PPD is inside the spear. Not making much damage though. Match missile gonna stun Heen. They definitely want to try to get something out of this. He's going here. south. You. He wants to try to find QO. They're gonna be a tiny bit off the mark for it. Coming in from the back as QO drops. March. Eating a pull here. No mana left in our PPD. He's gonna get swapped to safety. He can be swapping. He's gonna get stun off the secure kill on the march. Yeah, the back. For it, going to the spirit in middle lane will be safe at the time being. Ends up being two for two. Yeah, two for two, but that's two bloodstone charges towards the storm as well. And getting up to ten, you know, storm. If you ever go bloodstone, you want to get the early fights going for you as soon as you complete it, and that's what you get. Dyer's bottom tower is also, under it's two. I'm not gonna say it's two supports anymore because Zai obviously is a core, uh, core naga at this at this point. Ian wants to become the Mash Lord. He just. He wants to become the Storm Herald. Yeah, just, just click your Mask of Madness and hope. And just hope, yeah. Pray to the RNG Lords. Like, it, it could be happen. waiting for 4 actually. To be honest, if you do it, you probably die to the Aegis respawn of Storm, and he chases you down and kills him. Oh, he's going to block the spawn. That's cheeky. <laughs> yeah, that is cheeky. Also, he still has the Vengeance Aura on himself. Now he just lost it. But, uh, yeah, it's there, so his damage was not too impressive. AC and Vlad's on fear now. Made another pretty impressive recovery after having such a hard time. I mean, you mentioned this too during a draft, is having Vlad's AC and an Elotite on your team. Yes. Your right clicks do so much. It doesn't even matter what hero you are. Like, they have a Venge on top of that. You see it in every fight. Naga Siren as well plays into this part. The minus armor. Yep. So every single time they just try to mass fight, it seems the MVP are taking unreasonably high damage. And that's pretty much what you get. The build. The question is, what is MVP's response to this? Like, the mass aura basically coming in? I mean, what, it's 51% damage or around there for having the Vlads and the, uh, the Vengeance Aura coming out from the VS, so... Mm, well, it seems that it's gonna be an armlet build on Zardar, I assume, or maybe even Lifesteal is not. Definitely armlet as he confirms it by tying his gloves of the MSP as well. But, I don't know, man. Vlads would be really good to have. For, uh, I mean, he has against no armor against dudes. DT, and he actually has minus, what, like, 10, 11 armor or something like that from Riptide and the AC aura, so... Oh, it's, it's so much. Oh, and, and the wave Scream of, as well wave of Terror. Vengeance. So already 11 by just Haggai or I guess he's out there. So, he gets a double stun. Our team is actually going to be losing his Aegis here. We'll be respawning shortly, though, QO. Forest Puck is going to be Earth Player actually going to hit on Ryzen and QO. Ends up taking out the Slardar. Wish Doctor once again spending some time in the air as PPD is getting chased down by Foran. Mark is dying under his own tier 2. He comes in, throws out the Chronosphere, but Arteez is so tanky and here comes Zai with the song. Keen stuck in place. There is an Orchid up on Arteez. Good stuff coming straight away. You are executing so well in this fight. 
really hard to win this. I mean, Forum now trying to get away. Wait, jump back. Okay, that's Radiance not what he wanted. He's gonna come out again, but completely out of mana. And that's the so why Hero's dying for an Aegis only. And I have to agree with you, as you said yesterday, Andy. Storm, definitely the best Aegis carrier Radiance in the game. There's no bad. Just being able to respawn and have that kind of mobility Radiant and reach, like no matter how far away you run, the storm will catch you. Yeah, you know, unless you start everything. Mean, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. But this pressure here definitely gonna take out Rock now, uh, Rack top lane, and they will probably just take both and then back. Of course, Tears of Towers are standing on the other lane, so nothing more to really gain here. And they might even take the main tower if they want to now. They know the Chronosphere is down, but they also don't have split, so no shame in backing for your team here if they want to. I don't really know what MVP's backup plan is, because mm. the Void isn't really enough of a threat at this stage in the game. And QO, he's gonna go in on RTZ, just one bash here, another bash! Yeah, right. show the RNG Lord. I think the, the other problem they've got is that even if they do get a Chronosphere on, say, RTZ, you've got Swap, which we've seen, you've got Song, which we've seen, it's, and ET. It's really, really, really difficult for them yeah. to actually lock anybody down. Even the Yule Scepter or stomp from ET as well. I mean, Radiant's he has saved people twice with the Yule Scepter at least. Yeah. And EG can go for smoke now from their base. Just smoking up with the Storm and Universe. And that's more than enough Radiant's to kill pretty much anyone if they get the vision on them first. So the backup plan, to answer your question, Andy, I think it's just RNGs. I, I don't think you have firm, like, this is how we're going to come back into the game. Because you don't have, like, you, you don't have a push. You don't have that secure late game. You can't farm. It's very difficult. Easier controlling the lanes with a storm who can kill anyone, really, from very far. And you've got Nagasarian with a Radiance. Hmm. It's very true. So it's, it's and tough bots. times. And bots. It's interesting. Oh, they go on forward here. Silas is there. He could be being used. Still punching hard though. This is one of those scenarios where we used to see people pick like tiny and stuff against void teams. Oh, they see ogre, they're gonna go on him. Yeah, of course that four. RTZ just comes a million in. miles away. He uses all his mana, gets a pull off. Gets a charge though. 15 charges. Yeah. Uh, it's starting to get to that fountain region on uh on Is there a mana. limit on the number of charges you no. can have? You can have any number you want, Ted. That's the beauty of being a core player. <laughs> and then you buy more One day, stones. one day, Waga, I will know these things. Yes. I had a 53 charges bloodstone on this one. So that was godlike. But at Actually, it was Matt probably percent. beyond godlike. <laughs> yeah, Radiance it was bottom tower probably. Is under attack. I think so. So, tier 2 dropping here. I like the build from uh, Fear. You can go to the Diva next to just be the Aura Lord. You know, they already have Radiance, but if they didn't, you would have to go that ball. Oh, then Hex, I still ends up dropping for him. Gets a side fist off from long distance. That's, you know, sort of worth. And getting kills when you're behind is definitely going to give you a lot of gold. So 15,000 behind in, in gold as they get that kill. But, uh, you know. Wow. I think there's bit. something really important to note. Like, the way that EG play their cores is a lot of the times they actually make mid players buy the aura items. Like, let's look at MVP for example. They have, like, no AC, no Vlads. They don't have any auras pretty much at all. Yeah. And then on the side of EG, you have, a you have two damage auras one, of course, from the Vlads, one from the Vlads, AC. And you have Elder Titan. There's just so many things that allow you to. And they fight. have the bongos. Yeah, they, they have drums as well. We're going to see a kill here. Yeah. On the bottom lane is March ends up dropping, but it's a really, I think it's a really smart way to play it because normally you don't get those items until a bit later if you're getting it on even off laners or supports. Yeah. And it makes your team scaling just tremendous as opposed to whatever you're playing this, against MVP. This EG draft is a draft that you can look at and actually just think about that. How well does it scale? Okay, you have the Vengeful Aura, you have the Drums and Vlads and AC built, you're also going for the Shivas already. Wave of Terror works really well into the late and mid game, you have Riptide also for even more, and Ancestral Spirit from Elder Titan, all of it just giving so much that even a Storm with Red Clicks can act as a carry. Because sometimes a Storm, you find yourself not dealing that much with Red Click and <laughs> Arteezy playing pretty aggressively here, gets caught up though, might go down here, should actually go Oh, nice what spear a from Ian. That's beautiful. That was a very good point. I mean, he's only dead for 20 seconds, but still. The other well, thing is, hate. if you think about the fact they've got Naga Siren as well, started off, as you said, as a four, if the game goes long, mm. you've suddenly got a Radiance Naga Siren running around with money. 
It's like an additional problem. Yeah. They actually got 3,300 experience from that kill and 1,700 gold. So nice. pretty happy is MVP. But I think that's where EG scraps, you know, these kind of things. Sure, you can have good core players, but you have to respect that this is a well thought out draft as well. Yeah, from EG. I really like it. I think this is maybe one of the... Well, maybe one of my favorite drafts that I've seen so far in Phase 2. Because you, know? you look at it at face value and it's like, okay, yeah, you got EP, you got Brew. Built. But the way that they actually decided to go for it and the way that they built was really cool to me. And it's going to be an Agathem from Universe. He has it in 250 gold. And that's amazing, really. When he gets that, he can stop the Void, Stardar, or Ember from hitting even during BKB. Which is crazy strong, but we very rarely see it being used. Because normally after the four staff and Yules, you go Shivas. This game though, as you said, the mid laner, get him to build your items. He's pretty much got them all almost. I mean, could even be a hex though on Brewmaster. Yeah, I wouldn't hate hex no. actually. Would be good as well. And Roshan responds once again. Gem gonna be purchased by MVP so they can do some dewarding right now, but uh, welcome back, big boy. I think this Aegis, if it is gonna be Hex, they'll just buy it. Oh no, he's playing Lincolns. Is he? Or MVP? Yeah, he's gonna try and come in here. That's great. Just a little Sean has fallen to the dark. I mean, I guess Lincolns is still fine. Smoke here from MVP. They're thinking about trying to go in. There's a counter smoke as well. He needs to get Hex before he can throw out the ultimate. No spear gonna be used just yet. He's working to follow up. Able to use his spear, oh, he just ends up dying. The Earth Splitter hits on three of the MVP. Ryzen trying to TP away. The Song Canceler, Tizi comes back in, even with Amplify damage. Still has his Aegis up. And I think this is pretty much the beginning of the end here for MVP. He didn't get to get a single kill. Even they got one hero, the BKB hero, cannot get down a single kill. Oh my god. Well, everyone is so damn techy, you know? Like who is the easiest to kill on their team when they run together? Even Vengeful is sitting at over 20 armor. Elder Titan has over 20 armor, pretty much. I mean, GG when they're cold. stacking up, they're just too hard to kill. 30 armor Brewmaster. And GG gets called by MVP. That was a fantastic performance from EG. Yeah, very cool song in this display. Kind of what we were expecting to see out of EG. Like, just come in. And not necessarily, like, an easy time, but... They never really lost control, I think, you know? And, and that game especially, I feel as though their lineup yes. functioned well throughout the whole game, but they even had a good start, so. Yeah, well, F definitely MVP had the better chance in game one, and they were closer to